good news, the short's in color. Bad news, that color is Sickly Grimace. Second edition, updated with cutting edge information about mucus. Well, any Bingham will do, I guess. We like to keep the things that we own as clean as we can. That's why Dan is cleaning his bike. Hey, that's not his bike. He stole it from Pee Wee. It looks much better now. But his hands don't. Now they need cleaning. Fire up the belt sander. Dan washes up because for one thing, dirty hands don't look very good. Clean hands look much better. Hey, that's a very hygiene normative attitude. But these are different hands. A doctor's hands. Oh, fancy. And they're being washed for a more important reason than appearance. The soap and water are washing away microbes. It's like a fun water slide. Whee! Microbes are the tiny living things that are all around us. Snorks? Harmful microbes are usually called germs. That's called a slur, kids. Because germs cause infections and make us ill, much attention is paid to cleanliness in a hospital. If anyone wants to touch a dead body, come to room 210 this immediately. This girl is one of the patients here. She's much better today. The infection that made her ill began when disease germs entered her body and then multiplied inside it. It was hella gross. There are many germs in your mouth and nose even when you're not sick. That's an important reason for covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze. You're basically a pestilence dispenser. In the hospital laboratory, let's see what some germs look like under a microscope. Schweppervescence. Another name for germs and other microbes is microorganisms. That is, tiny living bodies that can be seen only through a microscope. During a lunar eclipse on a Thursday by the Pure in Heart. Now, as an experiment, let's take a sample of the germs that made this girl ill. I was supposed to be on a field trip to Six Flags today. We'll rub the cotton swab with the germs on this culture plate. It contains food for the germs. Nothing too crazy, just sheet pizzas and pop. The plate is divided into two parts. We'll treat half of the plate with liquid soap. Like some of the soaps we use every day, it has germ-fighting chemicals called germicides in it. He's a germicidal maniac. The other half of the plate is left untreated. The other side is swabbed with the leading brand. Let's see if she notices. When the culture plate is placed into a special kind of oven, an incubator, the germs have not only food, but warmth and moisture, yeah. the conditions they need for growth. Great. These are similar to conditions inside your body. But with less poop. Let's see what has happened after a few days. Hope you're hungry. Well, on the half that was treated with the soap, nothing's happened. The soap, with its germicides, kept the germs from growing. Take that, life. But on the untreated half, there are white spots. Each spot is a colony of thousands of germs. Yeah, yeah, and the stars are states. So the use of soap can prevent germs from multiplying and spreading. The military hygiene complex. We've already seen how hands are kept clean in a hospital. But what about naughty bits? Cleanliness of clothing is important, too. Clean uniforms are always worn. Everyone who works with patients wears clean clothing. Hear that, Greg? Clean uniforms for the people who work in a hospital as well as clean linens for the patients means a lot of laundry. And like a million Tide Pods. So the laundry room of the hospital is quite an important place. It's where most cartoon characters sneak into the hospital. Into the huge washing machines goes all the laundry. The soap and water will get it clean, but the high temperature of the water and the germicides in the soap will also destroy most of the germs. Yeah, but you gotta have like 20 quarters. While washing machines get clothes and linens clean, sterilizers get medical instruments clean. Hey, it's the Disney vault. Inside the sterilizer, very hot steam kills germs that even boiling water can't destroy. Oh, maybe next time, Song of the South. Instruments used in surgery must have no germs on them. So in a hospital, to prevent the spread of germs, everyone is concerned with cleanliness. Cleanliness of the people, of the clothes they wear, and the instruments they use. I have a dead possum in my pocket. Is that a deal breaker? Most of us aren't as careful as people in a hospital. Young Adam Maitland. Have you ever put something like a pencil into your mouth? 
That's one way Brown's germs up. may get into your body. You don't know how many partners that pencil has had. Taking a bite of someone else's food is another way you may get germs into your body. That's why it's a good idea to refuse offers like this. And to refuse haircuts from the blind. You can also get germs from another person by drinking from a glass that someone else has used and not washed. Ah, the old splash and dash. Food that has been handled with unclean hands, yours or someone else's, may have germs on it. When you eat such foods, germs can get into your body. Without even paying the cover charge. Many germs thrive on the warmth, food, and moisture found in your body. Gross. So if your skin is cut or broken, germs may enter your body and cause an infection. Yes, that does look infected. To help prevent an infection, you can apply an antiseptic. Oh, that's toenail which, polish. Like the germ-fighting elements in some soaps, kills many of the germs. But even if your skin is not cut or broken, it's still a good health habit to care for your skin and keep it clean. Okay. Let's see why. Oh, that's okay. This drawing shows oh. us a cross-section of the skin. Here is one of the hairs which grow out of the skin. Seen it dozens of times. The oil gland produces oil which makes its yeah. way along the hair to the yeah, surface to the of the surface, skin. To the surface, yep. The process is called skeeving. And here's a sweat gland. <sighs> yup. It produces sweat. Really? Perspiration, which is carried along the sweat duct to the surface of your skin. The Lord God went to great lengths to make you clammy and smelly. Your glands give off sweat all the time, but you notice it most when you're warm. Oh, it's that dream where I'm naked in school and so is everybody Sweating else. Sweating helps cool your body when it gets overheated. Inappropriate, Cam. Sweat is water which contains waste materials from your body. Now, go out in public. When I dare you. When water evaporates, the waste materials are left behind, along with oil, dirt, and germs. And evil. This mixture is everywhere on your skin, right down to your fingertips. Please pass the milk, please. Let's transfer a bit of this oily mixture to a glass slide. Now you're implicated in the alphabet murders. Now let's try to get the slide clean. Hey, it's Billy's turn to do the dishes. Water alone hasn't done it. Water alone won't get your skin very clean either. You need new water ultra. What about soap and water? Oh, you mean the extremely well-known combination of soap and water that this movie has already talked about for seven minutes? The soapy water gets around and under the oil and loosens the mixture. In a similar way, soap helps to get rid of the oil that is mixed with the dirt and germs on your skin. One perfect shot. So, when you wash, you need to wash everywhere and with soap. Seriously, Greg, are you getting this? Your scalp also perspires. It gives off waste products as well as bits of skin, dandruff. Since there is so much hair on your scalp, much oil collects there. Never mind, Michael Stipe. So you have to wash your hair and scalp thoroughly and often. If a soap is used that contains a germicide, leaving it on for a minute or two will kill more germs. A day or two, tops. Using a germicidal soap helps eliminate germs and unpleasant odors. What's it called again? Soap? Hold on, I'm going to write that down you for later. You want to wash thoroughly, where you perspire heavily. Make your annual shower count. Giving your face a good washing is important. You want to wash away the oily mixture, which may cause pimples. Pimples are like germ suicide bombs. And now, a good rinsing will wash away the dirt, oil, wastes, and germs. And sin and shame and doubt and feelings and dreams all washed away down the drain. When you dry, it's especially important to dry between your toes. Again, this is the for you, Greg. Between your toes are warm, and when they're moist, microscopic fungi warm and moist. grow there. Such fungi cause itching and redness and breaks in the skin, which we call athlete's foot. <laughs> Bet a bunch of nerdy doctors came up with that term. Because germs live in the dirt under nails, ah. having clean fingernails is another good Oh, help. okay, I'll talk, I confess. Clean nails look nice, too. Theoretically, anyway. Brushing your teeth is a kind of washing, too. Okay. Brushing removes food particles, which might otherwise be fed upon by the germs in your mouth. Such germs form acids, which can attack your teeth and cause tooth decay. Another groundbreaking insight from this stupid movie.
Is that it? Can I go? Dan's all dressed now. His body is clean, his clothes are clean, but more than that, cleanliness will mean better health for Dan. He's got to look his best when the Divine Spaceship arrives for his cult this weekend. Buy soap where you work or bank. <laughs>